I spend a lot of time thinking about the subconscious. To me, it's one of the kind of core first principles about how we function and think that you need to account for. And just to kind of quickly sum it up, just for reference, the way I think about it is that our subconscious has one main job, and it's to monitor our pleasure versus discomfort meter, if you will, kind of the one that's our gauge that drives our life. So our subconscious is constantly looking at that meter and trying to minimize discomfort and maximize pleasure. So often those calculations we run whenever we're making a decision or taking an action, the subconscious is feeding in inputs and information that's meant to minimize discomfort. But it does it in a very short-sighted, short-term, non-strategic way, right? It looks and says, well, if you go for a run right now, that's going to be painful. So don't do that, right? Don't, don't think about the long-term health implications. Just think right now, that'll, that'll bring discomfort. So, you know, let me give you a reason why you should sit on your couch. Your ankles have been bothering you or whatever it is, right? And people talk about this in all different ways. The way I kind of conceptualize it is through thinking of the subconscious and the conscious kind of battling it out almost. Um, and you'll hear lots of advice, and I've talked about this, that people give, which is, which is good advice to an extent of maybe how you trick the subconscious, right? How can we play a trick here to where the subconscious thinks it wants to do this thing, right? It starts to, to um, embrace that discomfort in some way, in, in some sort of mannerism that tricks it. Um, or maybe you just try and trick the little things it's going to do to stop you. Um, well, I can't make that much noise in the morning to go out for a run because I'll wake my wife up. So put your clothes out the night before and you know put them in a different room. Well, now you've addressed that issue. So now you should be fine. My, my concern there is often that we don't give the subconscious enough credit. It's really fucking good at its job. It knows how to minimize discomfort. And as David Goggins would talk about, it has a tactical advantage over us. It knows the flaws of our mind. It knows our weaknesses. It knows what we're afraid of. So it's really good at coming up with stories that get us to stay away from short-term discomfort. And that's a problem. You can go a different direction, right? I mentioned David Goggins. There's lots of people, he's maybe an extreme version, but there's lots of people that I think, myself included for a while, that thought, all right, so what's the answer here? You have this subconscious, which is, which is it means well, but it's feeding you bad information. It's making bad decisions. It's being short-sighted. Um, the goal must be to, to, to dominate it, <laughs> to put it down, to say, hey, you're not involved here anymore. You're not in charge. You want to you wanna, um, break the subconscious almost so that your conscious mind steps in and it determines what you do and what you don't do. Much more strategic, much more long-term view. Um, in theory, that should give you a better situation. And you, look, you see guys like a David Goggins or others like him um, who embrace that. And in many ways, it's funny. I had this thought when I was running on the treadmill the other day and I was running and I started to get a little bit, you know, I was maybe two miles into the run and I was, you know, had another mile to go. And I started thinking like, ah, I, you know, I kind of want to quit. This, this sucks because I hate running, right? There's discomfort involved there. And in my mind, it was my subconscious starting to kick in. And the thought that crossed my mind was, you know what? I should run an extra two miles. Maybe that'll show my subconscious, right? I'll teach it. <laughs> if you want to creep in with these bad thoughts, I'll punish you for it. And I'm going to enforce it to be run an extra mile. I have that ability now. My conscious mind can dominate the subconscious and have that happen. And maybe the implication will be it'll teach it a lesson. So it will never bring up this weak thought again of, hey, I want to quit. And I started going down that realm and, and kind of recognizing that that's what I've been embracing. I'm trying to break the subconscious. But I actually am not convinced that's the right way to do it for a whole for a host of reasons, but I'll call out the two main ones. One, as I've talked about before, I think there is some functional and, and non-functional discomfort. So sometimes you don't want to ignore discomfort. Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes you want that. Right? You don't want to just say, hey, I'm going to muscle through it and I'm going to, you know, shut your face subconscious. I don't care what you say. I'm going to do this thing anyway. Sometimes it's actually for our betterment and we need to listen to it. And kind of following that thread to the second point, I think the ideal situation as in life, when you're dealing with different entities or different people or whatever it is, is you want to find that balance. You want to find that kind of holy grail situation where the things are interconnected or aligned in such a way where they're both moving in the same direction. Now, I've talked about this before as, as kind of the Saturday morning moment, um, not to get all the way back into it, but that moment when you know you were a kid and you woke up on a Saturday morning thinking you had school and you were miserable and you were tired and you just wanted to go back to bed. And that's what your subconscious was telling you. But your conscious mind said, well, you got to get up. You got school. You can't, you know, for all sorts of reasons you have to. And then you realize it's Saturday morning. And all of a sudden your conscious and your subconscious mind become aligned. They both want to go back to sleep. And you can. They, they're both justified. There's no guilt. Everybody's working in lockstep. And to me, that's kind of the magical moment I think of. I think that's what we have to be striving for. Sure, probably for most of us, our subconscious has way too much 
control and authority over our life. So we do need to bring that down, but we need to bring it to a place of balance. You don't want to jump from one extreme to the other. You don't want to jump from the subconscious running everything we do to totally eliminating the subconscious or where I was even going to break it and punish it and teach it a lesson and dominate it. Um, there, you will get some benefit from that, but there's going to be problems in other areas. I think to find that true balance, to find that true meaning and purpose in life, for me, it's those two things being aligned because then it means that pleasure is okay, right? For, for a lot of people, they start to think that pleasure is the enemy. It's all about discomfort and being uncomfortable and embracing that and owning that. And you do need that to an extent for different activities and different things that you will do. But overall in our life, I think pleasure and happiness should be the goal. And how you get there is having your conscious mind and your subconscious mind align on that, on that thing that you should be doing so they both are willing to embrace the necessary functional discomfort and, and kind of move forward accordingly.